Hello, I want to say thank you for choosing to watch this video. You've made a great decision by choosing to watch this video. Everything that we talk about in this video is going to definitely change your life for the better. So today we're going to be talking about metaphysics. And like I do in most of my videos, I tell you what metaphysics is. Metaphysics is the study of thought and its relation to the material world. I like to give an example at the start of most of my presentations. This is a pen. Somebody created this pen. Somebody invented the word and the concept of a pen. Somebody invented the word and concept of a light, a camera. Everything around you and your environment starts with thought. So metaphysics is a study of thought in relation to the material world. If you're ever going to manifest and create success or create your reality, it's going to start with how you think. So my job is to inform you about the power that you have within you. Because power does not come from outside of you. It comes from within you. Okay. So in this particular presentation, we're going to be talking about conformity and how it limits success. Okay. So what is conformity? I don't really like to use big words in my videos so that everybody can understand even down to a fifth grade level. So conformity, simply put, is just being a follower, following people's footsteps or um, following the direction of the majority you know, or like-mindedness. That's another word for conformity. But let's see how I define it in this presentation. Conformity, the act of aligning one's behavior with and beliefs with societal norms or group pressure. While comforting, often hinders personal growth and success. So pretty much when you try to, like, let's be real. Majority of the world, they don't own businesses. They don't succeed. They are negative. So most people are not successful. So if you're going to do what most people do, then you're going to get what most people get, right? So to become successful, you have to do something differently. You have to think differently. You have to act differently. You have to behave differently, which is why I cover these topics in most of my videos so that I can help you think differently and behave differently and act differently about yourself and your reality. Okay. So this presentation explores the psychology behind conformity its impact on innovation and ways to break free from its limitations. Okay. We're going to examine scientific insights and consider a, bi a biblical perspective on forging your own path. Great. So understanding conformity, social acceptance, conformity stems from our deep rooted need for belonging. It's a powerful survival instinct that shapes our behavior social acceptance. For example, I, I, I particularly wanted to make this video because I was in a playground with my niece. She's three years old, and beautiful young girl growing up. When you see a child grow up, you start to learn a lot about yourself. Observing a child and how they think and how they know nothing about the world. They don't have a concept of danger. They don't have a concept of people. You start to learn about how you became who, how I became who I am, and it shows how people become who they are because observing the child will teach you a lot about human nature. So I was in the playground with my niece, and usually the playground is usually empty, or maybe one or two other parents come along to with their kids to have fun at the playground, of course. And this other lady and her daughter came to the playground, and instantly my niece was intrigued because okay. There's another girl here and she's her age and she wants to have friends, right? That's a natural social acceptance. You want to have friends. You want to be social. Human nature, we're social creatures naturally. So the, the girl, the other girl starts running around the playground. They talk to each other. Oh, let's play. Let's jump. Let's run around. Let's go down the slide. They're talking and talking and talking. So it gets to a point where the other girl goes to the swing. She goes to the swing to go on the swing and she's on there by herself without the assistance of of her mom right usually i take my niece and i place her on the swing and i push her right so this time because the other girl and her mom was not pushing her my niece decided that it was no she does she wants to do it by herself that's what she kept saying i want to do it by myself i want to do it by myself but the only reason why she's Doing that is because she has another person there to observe and see that, okay, this girl doesn't need anybody pushing her. I don't want anybody pushing me because I want to be socially accepted. 
So th that's how at three years old, you can see how conformity and trying to be like-minded with other people can come into play. And this is not just, it, it starts as a child, but it grows up to, it goes up to when you're an adult. Fear of rejection. The fear of standing out can override our individual judgment. This often leads to self-censorship and suppressed creativity. A great example of this can be even in your family, right? Uh, many times people want to pursue different things, but the idea of even just mentioning it to the people that's around them, which is typically their family, uh, they're, they're scared of being rejected or their ideas or their dreams being rejected or them being told they're not good enough. So they rather just suppress it and keep it to themselves. And meanwhile, they could be somebody, right? So I once... I once remember watching a Mr. Beast video. Mr. Beast was talking about how his mom uh, paid for his college and he didn't go. He ended up going to campus and just making YouTube videos. And she thought he was going to school the whole time. And she kept he kept telling her, oh, I'm going to school. School is fine. You know, she kept asking him about school. But meanwhile, he was creating content on a daily basis and doing his own thing because that's what he wanted to do with his life. And he got tired of explaining that to his mom because apparently she wasn't listening and she just had the idea of where he should be going in his life. But if he didn't pursue that dream, he wouldn't be who he is today. Mr. Beast is one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. So that's that. Group influence. The Ash conformity experiments revealed our tendency to doubt our own perceptions when faced with group pressure. I also once watched a video this video was so interesting. So the video started with one lady in a reception room for a dental clinic. So she walks into the reception room and in the reception room, there's another man already there. Right. And she sits down and every time a bell goes off, the lady gets up. Um, the man who she met in there gets up and sits down and she looks at him the first time. Like, OK, she observed the movement. Then the second time he did it. He stood up, the bell goes off, he stands up, he sits down. And she observed it like, okay, am I supposed to be doing this? She just looks awkward. And she asks him, oh, am I supposed to be doing or why are you doing that? And he's just like, I don't know. And the bell goes off and he gets up and he sits down. And guess what? After the third time, the lady gets up as well and starts going with the bell. She gets up, sits down every time the bell goes off. And more people start coming into the room. More people start coming into the room. And guess what? By the time the 10th or 12th person came into the room, the whole room was getting up to the sound of that bell. Right? So that's human nature. Once we come into an environment and we see that that's the norm or that's the normal belief or behavior within that environment, because we don't want to be rejected, it's automatic for us to easily be influenced to acting the same way as other human beings in that environment. So... I'm going to talk about the scientific factors about that. It's also a natural thing that you have to be aware of because you have, it has to come into your awareness for you to be able to be like, oh, I have to stop this. I have to stop the people pleasing. I have to stop the like-mindedness. I have to stop following. I have to become a leader. I have to think for myself, right? Because the less you think, the harder you have to work. The perils of like-mindedness. Echo chambers. Like-mindedness creates echo chambers, reinforcing existing beliefs. This stunts personal growth and limits perspective. When you're born, I always give the example of rich dad, poor dad, but let's do something different. Um, growing up in the hood, like you grew up in the hood and you see people that are so ready to go to jail and it's like, oh, <laughs> you see people that are conforming to the fact that, oh, there's a no snitch policy or, um, if somebody tries you, you have to murder them or you have to do certain things to prove to them that you're bigger than them or stronger than them because it's the hood. Oh, I grew up in the hood. I'm from the hood. Like you see somebody like you step on somebody's shoes, you say, whoa, are you trying me? I'm from the hood. You know who I am? I'm from the hood. It's become a label of sort that this is where I'm from. And people from that location, we act like this. And I have to show you that I'm from the hood for you to respect me. So you understand it creates that belief system. But in, in reality, that's not the way to act, right? That's not the best way to act for you or for another person. Because even if you're a tough guy, the other person might have a weapon. The other person might have different things that they'll use to neutralize the situation. And 
sometimes forgiveness is the best action. But if you're from the hood, I guess it's not. Innovation roadblock. Homogeneous groups often fall prey to group things. Diverse teams, however, consistently <laughs> perform in, in problem solving and creativity. Basically, like the hood example, that's perfect. Like, um, if you're a smart young black individual in the hood and you decide to not follow the group think and you start to create or you start to design, you start to do your own clothes, people are going to start clowning you because you're going to stand out and go, oh, look at him. He thinks he's so fly with his ugly ass clothes, the clothes he thinks he's wearing that he created. Oh, look at him. People are going to be so quick to call you out because you're stepping away from the pack. You're stepping away from the like mindedness. Right. But that's the best thing to do, because that is what is going to set you apart. Why do you think people like Kanye, for instance, Kanye is so weird amongst black people because he says the things that most people are not brave enough to say. He does the things that most people are not brave enough to do. He creates the songs that most people are not brave enough to create. And that innovation roadblock, the world could be so much more if a lot of people came out with their ideas and couldn't be disarmed couldn't be harmed for their creativity. A lot of people are just scared, like, what would the world actually think of me, right? Missed opportunities. By surrounding ourselves with similar views, we miss chances for intellectual growth and pioneering breakthroughs. That's pretty much the same thing. Like I said, like, a lot of people have creative ideas and it's hindered by their family, it's hindered by their friends, it's hindered by their neighborhood, it's hindered by their school, it's hindered by social media. You know, because they, they're scared of what people will think. So they just shove it away. They just throw it away. Like even creating my channel, for instance, like I have a lot of people that show me love and say, oh, wow, keep going. Today, I got a comment while I was working out. Oh, please keep going. <laughs> and thank you so much for that comment. Right. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, OK, one person said that on my latest video. And that felt so amazing because it's like I'm doing this for somebody. It's helping somebody. Right. And if I if I was group thinking and thinking that about what my friends would think if I pursued what I wanted to do, I would have not ever had the opportunity to help that person. So that's a great example right there. The science of conformity. How does it actually play in biology? As like I said, human nature, it's part of human nature. So you have to be aware of these things happening and stop yourself from actually going through with it so that you can live a better life. So new, neurological rewards, right? Conformity activates the brain's reward centers, releasing feel-good chemicals. This reinforces group alignment behaviors, right? You feel good when everybody, you know you walk into the party, everybody's like, oh, what's up, man? Oh, you're cool. Like, imagine you walk into a party where everyone is smoking, and you're the one guy that's like, oh, no, I don't smoke. Everyone's going to be it takes a lot of bravery for you to not fall to that peer pressure. Even 50 Cent. 50 Cent said he used to go to the club and he used to fake smoke. He used to fake drink. Like he would put something in his cup and that's the cup he would hold the whole night. But he, would, he wouldn't drink because he has to wake up at 5 a.m. the next day to do something. But he needed to do that to influence the people around him and still be relevant amongst the people he was trying to do business with, if you get what I'm saying. So... That's a neurological reward. Your brain has reward centers in it that are planted for you to think that, okay, I need to do this to fit in, like trying to fit in. You've heard about that before. Evolutionary advantage. Conformity wants and short group survival. It facilitated cooperation and protected against external threats. Threats. So, you know, back in the stone ages, humans had to be together, to protect each other to be able to survive. Right. And it's a survival mechanism, pretty much like you have to stay like a pride of lions. They stay together and they stick together so they can hunt. Right. Things like that. So we do that so that we can be able to fit in. But in all situations, you might not have to fit in. That's the problem. Sometimes you have to stand out to make a difference or make an impact, especially when you know it makes sense. Modern implications today. Blind conformity can lead to societal stagnation. It may hinder progress in rapidly changing environments. 
one thing that I've also heard lately, a great example that I can give as something that will be a modern implication is uh, I heard that some cars can run on water or even electric cars, for instance, right? Electric cars is a new thing. Elon Musk just started that. But when he first started it, it got a lot of backlash because it's like, okay, batteries, okay, you're mining in Africa. A lot of people are against the things that he has to do to create this new step. But there's also a problem with crude oil, right? They say crude oil destroys the environment, the skies, things like that. And he's trying to find a better solution. But that solution also comes with impact, right? People have to go and mine all these things. So, you know, conformity. If he has to conform to the pressure of the the petroleum cars or the gas cars and the industry and what they're saying about him. Elon Musk will have never created Tesla or electric cars or whoever created electric cars. I might be wrong. I don't think Elon Musk created electric cars or the concept, but you get what I mean, right? There's already a way of life. And most times people don't want to change from the way of life. So it has a big effect on how we can advance as a society because a lot of people think that okay, this is bad, okay, AI is bad because it's the mark of the beast, okay, this is bad because it's that, you know, things like that might slow down our progress as human beings. Conformity in a society, a double-edged sword. What are the positive impacts about conformity? Because conformity is not always a bad thing, right? But when it has negative effects on your life and your success, then it's a bad thing for sure. So the positive impacts, social cohesion. Yes, it's good for us to be together, and for us to actually debate about things that might be good or bad for society as a whole. So that's a good that's a good fact about conformity. Predictable social norms, right? We know how humans behave. We know what we all want. We all want safety, protection, shelter, food, right? It's predictable. We have those things that we all know that we agree on. Efficient decision making especially for the government and people that are in places of power. Uh, conformity helps us to make great decisions about what we want to do. So conformity helps people in places of power make efficient decisions about what society and the direction of society because we all know we want simple things like protection, food, shelter, societal, cohesion, we all agree on those simple things that we all want, right? But when it comes down to an individual level, there might be some negative impacts of conformity on ourselves or our beings. And what are those negative consequences? Suppression of individuality, right? Like I said, if you want to pursue something, people around you might not agree. People might not people around you might not believe in what you what you've thought about and what you've seen as a dream and the possibilities that you believe. For example, like me explaining to uh, my African my African relatives about what YouTube is and the possibilities of YouTube and how you can connect with millions of people all over the world to a 60-year-old African man who's my uncle. He might be like, what are you doing? Go, go, go study in school. I graduated university, by the way, but things like that, if you get what I'm saying, they just might not understand. They just might not get it. So I have to stick to what I believe in and pursue it on my own individuality. I have to be my own individual to succeed. Resistance to necessary change. A great example to, for resistance to necessary change is things that are going on in the world right now. Like there's a recession, there's a lot of poverty. Poverty causes a lot of crime, things like that. So a lot of people say, oh, there should be universal basic income or something like that to to fight crime and to be able to make sure that every person around the world is fed. Some people believe it's not a good idea. Some people believe it's a good idea. Those are the those are the type of things that maybe can change the world or maybe necessary to make impact on the world or things like that. I don't know where I stand on that, but you know, you never know. Missed innovations. Like I said, if Elon Musk never created Tesla, if um if like I said, there's also an idea of cars that could run on water, but I there are conspiracies out there that believe that the oil industry or the petroleum industry doesn't want that to happen because that could kill a ten billion or trillion dollar industry entirely, right? In cars and in crude oil and in all these great things, right? So 
we can miss out on innovations because we don't want to shut down certain systems that have been working for so long. Conformity. Biblical wisdom on, conform on non-conformity. So the narrow gate in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, it speaks of a narrow gate leading to life. This metaphor encourages thoughtful individual choices. In that verse, it talks about how many people go through the, the wide road and that road would lead to destruction and torment and suffering. While few individuals will choose to go to the narrow road, which will lead to eternal life, blessings and all the things they actually pray for and ask for. Because, you know, following the narrow path isn't easy because you have to leave your friends behind. Go check out my video I'm talking about. I had to leave my friends behind to pursue success. Things like that, right? You have to make sacrifices to follow that narrow path, which which is not always clear. The, the wide road, you already know your outcomes, right? You already know, okay, I have to do this, do that. You might not like it, but you know that if I do this, do this, do that, I'll get a good salary and I'll live a comfortable life, right? But the narrow road is a road where you might not get anything at first. You might get 10 views on your YouTube videos like I do sometimes, right? You might get no views on some shorts or you might get, you might start a business and you fail the first time. That's the narrow road. That's the road where nobody might be there to hold your hand, but you know you're in a going in the right direction for you. And you know you're pursuing something different. You know you're doing it for a great cause. Spiritual discernment. The scripture suggests that true fulfillment often lies off the beaten path it requires courage and discernment right so it, it takes a lot of wisdom to know that okay i need to make the sacrifice and stop following everybody i need to be a leader i need to stop being a follower because you know like in that video i told you to go watch i talk about how i tried to bring a lot of my friends on a path because we talk about all this stuff a lot of the time like we sit down, we talk about how we could be successful, how we could do great things, how we could pursue all these businesses. But there was a particular day I said, today we have to start. We can't keep talking because talking and knowledge without action is nothing. You can never make nothing out of, you can never make something great out of no action, right? You have to take action. And I was tired of talking, but at the end of the day, none of my friends took action with me. Here we are today. Personal journey. This passage reminds us that success and spiritual growth are deeply personal journeys, not crowd following exercises. Success is not a crowd following exercise. The things that you have to do to succeed, you're going to do a lot of that on your own. And if you're lucky, you might find one person like a co-founder, which is rare, which is rare. You might be blessed. I don't want to even say it's rare. That's a belief, not a fact, but it's a personal journey. It takes a lot of self-discipline. It takes a lot of self-understanding. You have to understand yourself and understand that many people are not willing to make those sacrifices that you are willing to make to pursue your dreams or people don't have big dreams like you do. That's why you are watching this video, not them, right? That's why you are in your room, on your computer, on your phone, wherever you are by yourself with your headphones on watching this right now because you found it interesting and you know that you can learn something from this. But not everybody will stick around to get the information and actually act on it. Right? A lot of people are comfortable with being comfortable. <laughs> oh, I, I get the party. I get to have my car. I get the, you know, the world is in a place where you can get, you can get everything like this. Once you graduate university, get a job, you can loan a car, loan a house, loan everything. You're comfortable. You don't have to. But if you quit, you lose it all. You quit, you lose it all, right? So <laughs> it's easy to sign up to be comfortable. But for you to take the long road, which is the narrow road, and actually be by yourself, cold nights, nights where you don't know what's going on, you're planning your business, you, you made no money, but you give a lot of effort, it all pays off in the end, even though at the start of it, it seems like you're not following what everybody's doing. You look at your, all your friends and they're partying, having fun, but you're focused on your own personal journey for success. And later it will pay off. Trust me. Uh, breaking free. 
these are the strategies for non-conformity. This is the best way for you to stop conforming, stop following the crowd, stop being like-minded, start being your own individual. Cultivate critical thinking. Spend a lot of time thinking. Question assumptions and seek diverse perspectives. Encourage intellectual curiosity and open-minded discussions like this one. Just like how I'm feeding you this information, I'm not forcing it down your throat. It's an open-minded discussion. If you want to do this, go ahead. If you don't, go ahead. But the reason why you're here, you're here for a reason, for sure. That's one thing I know. The reason why you're watching up until this point is because you know that this information is for you. You know that you want to diff live a different life. You know that you want to do something different. You know that you have a dream. That's why you're up. You're watching this video up until this point. So you need to cultivate critical thinking. Spend time thinking. Thinking about your decisions, thinking about your friends, thinking about your choices. Stop listening to people who have not gotten where you want to go. Stop listening to them. Stop listening to people that don't make sacrifices. Stop listening to people that are not self-disciplined. Stop listening to people that don't want to succeed. Stop listening to people that don't think big. You can't listen to them because you're thinking big. You're trying to succeed. You're trying to do better. You're trying to to achieve great things. You can't listen to somebody that's trying to achieve small things. If you want to achieve great things. It doesn't just it just doesn't make sense, my friend. Embrace discomfort. Step out of your comfort zone regularly. Growth often happens when we challenge our established norms. I got a comment from a lovely lady who says, "Oh, I want my videos to be as natural as yours." And I told her like I checked out some of her videos on her YouTube channel and I was just watching them. I was like, "You're natural like you're doing your own thing and your own your when you grow your own audience, they're going to love you for the way you talk." The way you walk, the things you talk about, the inspiration you share, that's what they're going to love you for. So me being like this is because I embraced discomfort. I took myself out of my comfort zone so many times that I got used to doing it. Now I can come in front of the camera and just do it and talk about things that I want and I know will help you guys. Foster self-awareness. Reflect on your values and motivations. Align your actions with authentic self not societal expectations. For example, like I said, the hood example. Most people think because you're black that you have to be on some treacherous behavior. You have to prove something to other people when they try you or when they step on your toes, right? For me, I don't I don't align with that. I have an authentic self. I, I rather work I, <laughs> I I rather walk away. I know there's a level of disrespect that you have to defend yourself, of course, but I rather walk away. I'd rather walk away. I'd rather call the cops, man. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to prison. Well, who would want to go to prison? So that's how I think. So that's because I'm able to remove myself from that mindset of, of group think that every black man has to have this aggressive nature about himself where he has to show and prove to somebody that he's the toughest in the room. I don't have to do that. Trust me, I'm, a, I'm six foot four. 250 pounds, I lift weights, I bench press more than anybody you probably know, so it's not about strength, it's about maturity, it's about respect, it's about self-respect, it's about me knowing my authentic self and not what people expect of me, right, I don't even want people to see me in that nature where I'm fighting or arguing with somebody over something petty, because that's just who I am, seek diverse experiences, expose yourself to different cultures and ideas. This broadens your perspective and fuels innovative thinking. When you see the way that people live like in other places, like other parts of the world, like, you know, like <laughs> in America, like you see people that everyone talks about, oh, I want to get married and my boyfriend must be rich. Uh, blah, blah, blah. In Africa, it's a whole different thing. Like there are people that, that get married poor. And they don't have any money, but they love each other and they eat together. They eat together with, with bare hands and, you know, they don't think about, oh, they think like this whole 50-50 thing. Oh, a man has to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a group thing because people think that that's what everybody's doing everywhere, but that's not the truth. There are bare people that are in relationships together and figuring out, figuring it out together. 
right? So people put a lot of pressure on young people, like you're you're 20 years old, you're thinking about how to provide for a 20 year old girl that her father can give her the money she's asking you to give her. Come on, like when you think about it, like it's like that doesn't make any sense. It's just good think because she thinks that that's what she's supposed to be doing because she's listening to the followers, and we can get into that. Another influence on group think is social media social media once you scroll on a video you see 850,000 likes on the video you start to think that everybody agrees with this you automatically people don't realize this but automatically you see a video with millions of likes you start to think like oh that means everybody thinks like this so i have to think like this and it's easy for you to fall into conformity with those type of things so be careful and be aware and stay authentic to who you are and your true value and like i said if you Watch my videos about law of attraction and other things like that. You realize that your thoughts create your reality. So even if even if many people think about um, certain things, like for instance, your girl, all like some guys will say all girls are all girls want this, all girls want that. But if you think a certain way, like okay, I don't I don't spend I don't spend I don't spend money I don't have on women. I just spend what I can and I expect her to do the same trust me you you probably find a girl that's gonna do that for you and love you for who you are and like you for what you do and how you make her happy because you think that way you you're authentic to yourself you don't follow what people follow and she's gonna respect you for that and you're gonna attract somebody that thinks the same because like attracts like that's the that's the law of attraction right there so when you when you explore these concepts and you start to step out of bounds from the normal you start to see that life is still good. Oh, you were so scared of stepping out of the normal. You thought everyone is going to hate you. No, you're still going to be okay. Just like me, I'm telling you. I I've done all this stuff. I've lost a lot of friends. I've gained a lot of friends too. Gained when, when you start to become your real self, you, you, you're going to detach from the group that you were before. And when you become authentic, you're going to attract a new group of people, a new set of people, your reality is going to change, your environment is going to change, you're going to become a whole different person. So that's the end of the presentation. Like I said, you've made a great decision choosing to watch this video and subscribe and check out my other videos. They will definitely change your life. Peace.